Angela and Tracy, thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me today. I got to be honest with you, a little nervous, a little excited. Uh, almost didn't even know what to write down, what to ask you to, because uh, being the oldest of three, I'm from 1988. Uh, and then my brother was two years later. And then my other brother was a couple years. Uh, so Blue's Clues was around in my house for a while. Oh, that's and, the best. It is. And and so let me let me ask you to uh, how do you feel that now it, it's it's made it to 25 years and then it's still just as beloved as it was back in 96? Overwhelming, heartwarming, all the feels. <laughs> I mean, we don't believe it because we think we're, you know, we're 25. Right. So we're, so we haven't, it hasn't really, been 25 right. years at all. It's been like a you know, three, five at the most, five but, at the most. You know, when you put something like, it was such a love project and when you yeah. put that out in the world and people still respond, it's just like, it is, it's overwhelming. It's all the feelings. Yeah, it's pretty magical. I, I've seen that. Grateful. I, I've seen that you've, you've worked on several other uh, uh, children's products. What makes Blue so unique? Something about the first, I think. Yeah, <laughs> the first it. born. <laughs> the mixed media I think the talking okay. to camera I do think the mixed media I think the stars are aligned um with Blue's Clues in a way that uh is really hard to replicate and I think we both found success outside of Blue's Clues but we always mm -hmm. just want to keep coming back right because there's something about the family and the people and just what we're what we're all about and what we're right. trying to do the homegrownness of the show you know that was our first show our first baby and putting our love and energy into that and all the family that has grown from that i mean including nickelodeon who's such yeah. a family you know we literally grew up there so it just you know it's a place Feels we like want to be mm -hmm. it, it's uh yeah it, it's fantastic i mean now you have a multi-generations of children and I, and I know you don't want to hear it that way because yeah 25 years of it <laughs> And I look at myself back going, geez, how, so that makes it, uh, uh, yeah, I count myself. But yeah, you definitely every every year the family grows with, with every with every season, you, you get new viewers and then you get returning viewers. I know that watching the the film, the Blue's Clues and You, um, story time with Blue, I, I was amazed at how nostalgic it felt, but still modernized for today. But the changes were so minor. Can you, can you talk about some of the changes maybe or non-changes throughout the years that have been- uh, Can you imagine how many hours, weeks, years- We, we talked, talked about, about what should, we should change and what we shouldn't. But the structure of the house and the, the interactivity and all those beats, everything there is the same. I think mm -hmm. you probably noticed the notebook is one of the newest changes and we had a lot of debate about that do we go full techno do we stay classic um and like all preschool um solutions compromise is the best and, and we were so attached to things like the phone the mm -hmm. phone was a gorgeous design and we wanted to keep that and then it's like well there is video now if we right. want to do some video calls that's right. going to help our audience so yeah we wanted to be in their lives of what they have in their lives and screens and technology, FaceTime and email part of mm -hmm. their lives. So we wanted to make sure to include that. And it's useful, right? Because we think that once you have a notebook, you have a notebook for life. And then from the technology side, it's because it's how they use it, right? And yeah. how we can show that you use it yep. for good. Mm -hmm. So we even have now, I think in some upcoming episodes where we don't, where we take pictures of our clues and their clues overhead of little videos or pictures too, incorporating that and modernizing that, using it yeah. in that way. Yeah, I mean, it's always a great idea. I mean, yeah, because you, you, what you want to obviously you want them to learn, you want them to to be able to interact better with with their surroundings. And yeah, that's a that's different, of course, from from the 90s, very, mm -hmm. very different from from writers. I'm very curious uh, because you I mean, you've done countless of these episodes. When is it that maybe you start to think about revisiting certain topics in the show? Oh, so there's so much conversation about that, right? Because there's 10 different ways you can say the same thing or you can approach the same curriculum. And so in certain areas, we wanted to do justice to some of the originals, which we love so much. And then in other ways, we wanted to approach it um, in something in a new way, the way Josh would approach things, right? Like family and culture and um, what he loves and his passions. And so those kinds of stories that we wanted to tell um, and bringing more people to his world is something new that we're doing um, that we haven't done in a long time and things like that. So I feel like the conversations are fluid in the sense of how what it's always about at the end of the day, the center is the kids. 
Mm -hmm. So it really is about um, what we think kids need to hear now. Um, and when we say now, it's like two years from now, because by the <laughs> time we write, animate and get shows on the air, it's a little while, but there are obviously there are things that, you know, we want to address in terms of equality and diversity and love and family that are universal forever, you know, and so those topics to adding that to our cognitive kindergarten readiness curriculum uh, and that level of socio-emotional. Yeah, it, it, it's so great. Oh, can you comment a little bit on Joshua De La Cruz? I, I love him. I think he's fantastic as a host yes. and what he what he brings to the show. Me? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> you know, I talked before. You should talk. <laughs> All right. Um, we love Josh for many reasons. One of his um, ability to play guitar and Broadway and sing and dance. Just the diversity and the representation and being the first uh, Pacific Asian host, we're so excited about and how much he's grabbed onto that and how much we've leaned into that with Blue's Clues and the stories of visiting the Philippines, having his Lola come, his grandma come um, and getting to explore that. And, um, you know, and he's such a great advocate, such a genuine big hearted guy of just going and speaking about diversity and inclusion and how proud he is of Blue's Clues and really getting the message out there. Yeah, he's a he's a leading man in so yep. many ways. You know, we just did this movie or shot this movie, and he's just like spreading his wings. And it's just just amazing. when we thought he was so talented, he just like burst what? out. And he's like, what? <laughs> it's like you're amazing. Yeah, no, he's he's one of a kind. Yep, that that's that's great to hear, uh, Tracy. I gotta ask you, where did you find your blue voice? <laughs> no, just, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that that bark ever since I was a kid, just barking. Bow, bow, bow. And I'm sure you've heard the story. I don't know when we did the pilot, we didn't have a lot of money. So we just went around the room of who could bark. <laughs> I, I could bark thinking that we'd get a professional voiceover person when we went to series, but luckily fell everyone in fell in my love with my voice. So favorite yeah. part of the job, love it. So grateful for it. Oh, no, it's her I, own language. She creates her own language and sings and ridiculous. But anyway, not just uh, barking, I, she's performing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, it, it's it's such an iconic sound now. You know, I I do it all the time around my daughter. <laughs> doing her dog and all yeah, yeah it's it, it's fun. It's so much fun, and and I I think that's what as part of it as as it reminds me of my childhood watching you know Steve do certain things on a make really simple drawings where I felt like I can draw also and, right. and things like that. Yeah. So yeah. um, I of course you I, can draw also. Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I wanted to ask you too, um, as you as you know, it went went super viral, and I'm sure you've been asked this a, a hundred times already. Yeah, did you watch it and cry? Uh, it was you know it, it was very emotional. I did not, so I did not realize how much it would hit. And then even the the version of the video I watched, there was a caption on top. It's like just wait till the end, and you're you know just be warned. It, it's gonna Aww. it's gonna hit you know just going back and, and and realizing when that change happened and and how and how much yeah I was a little upset about it and then also just kind of hearing his experience what he's been through how do you how do both of you feel about that reach and, and about the reaction that the world has had to to just those few minutes of him coming back and kind of acknowledging everyone and kind of almost giving everybody a hug Oh, yeah. well, a well needed, we needed it, right? yeah. and it is that beautifulness of being able to take the legacy of what we've done who he is as a person and having him acknowledge that connection um and you know I haven't seen anything like that since you know Fred Rogers that's just that beautiful like I'm going to talk to you now as an adult the same way I talked to you then with respect and admiration and love and like that it was just, it was gorgeous. And not only was it a beautiful video, but like it was a gift to us, right? Because then all of a sudden we could see even more so the the reach, right? And that, and then mm -hmm. all of those 20 somethings reaching back and talking about it and people that worked mm -hmm. for us for 25 years ago. It was just ago, a love like, fest and opened oh the floodgates of all this love and of just one gigantic blues clues yeah, it was around just, the world. And it is, it's just, it's yeah. crazy. It's still, it's, it's just nuts. It's still I think I think also for me it was it's that realization of, of how much of an impact the show has had because just for a few moments you know it was just kind of a trip right back into being a kid where, where he's teaching us something very simple but now it's it's also a reflection of what we've done 
since then, what we learned from there and what we've been able to accomplish. So, yeah. It, and I mean, I've had two, three or four conversations with different people who I didn't even know were into the show. And Aww. I was like, hey, did you watch that? Like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it was, it was phenomenal. So Aww. I have to say congratulations to both of you for, for you. being able to create you know, such a lovable character and and be i mean we were talking over 160 countries or 20 languages uh that's quite the reach for for any you know especially a, a children's show it, it's phenomenal <laughs> i know Thank i'm geeking ge- i know i'm geeking out a little bit that's why uh, we like no, that's okay we'll, love it. we'll just start to cry i know we've been weird for you the past two so days. we have to be careful <laughs> so so i do want to ask you being that you are in 100 60 countries do you guys make any adjustments sometimes for different cultures or different areas and and anything significant that you'd like to share well we, one, yeah <laughs> i was just gonna say one of the biggest things we do is not actually have any writing or graphics on camera so that it can relate to all audiences so we wouldn't have you know uh the english language and that's what we did english. a couple of reading episodes and those are special but other than that we don't do anything and then i think the most notable are the different hosts that we've had okay. localized so mm-hmm. in the uk we had kevin and he was phenomenal and people think of kevin the way that americans or other people think of steve and right. it's just we had a beautiful. korean host uh brazilian host i think i love that i love that that, that's great. I, w- I want to ask you just to wrap it up. What's next for Blue? What's next for Josh? Is there anything unique that we that we can get excited for? Oh, big movie. The movie, mm-hmm. the feature film. Um, he goes out into the real world and it's definitely a transitional, like older family date movie kind of movie, right? Where you're out in New York um, figuring, you know, finding clues throughout New York to fulfill Josh's dream. And you just on Broadway. You just root for him. Yep. It's, it's so good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, the live action. We're excited for all of our animated characters to see them in the real world. It'll be a whole new dimension. How be- exciting. Yeah, wow. that, that, that's great. It's something that everybody can enjoy. And I think everybody will enjoy it together. I know my, my daughter and I will. Oh, and so- how old's your daughter? <laughs> no, well, she's 10. And oh, she likes to. She'll still she like, like it. She'll still like no, it. No, she likes to pretend like she doesn't like some of the some, <laughs> some of these shows because I just covered Paw Patrol, and um, she was like, "Oh, I don't watch that." And then I popped in the movie for a review, and she knew everything. And I was like, <laughs> "You liar!" <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, if not, I have cousins, I have family who who Blue is very beloved, so uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun with it. Uh, Angela Tracy, thank you so much for your time. It's it's Thank been you. an honor to talk to you both of you, uh, and I am very I'm very appreciative of the opportunity. Oh, thank oh, you, thank Emmanuel. You. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Bye. <laughs>